Hi there. Today I'm here to answer a recurring question that I'm often asked. Why aren't you releasing new videos at the moment? What is going on? Well, the quick answer is that life can be pretty complicated at times. The long answer is that a lot has been going on in my life recently, including a serious climbing accident happened a few months ago during my yearly trip to the Italian Alps. The good news is I'm still here, although I'm gonna have a pretty big scar reminding me of what happened. I'll tell you about it, but I have to start with a disclaimer. If seeing blood makes you sick, you should probably stop watching this now. I was having a great time as usual, hiking in this particular part of northern Italy that is really close to my heart. It was my grandma's favorite, and I believe her spirit still dwells in the area. The nature there is just spectacular. Beautiful landscapes, fresh air, clean water, great food. One could not ask for more. Three days into my trip, I decided to climb a peak between Italy and Switzerland. Pistremoggia sits peacefully at 3,440 meters, or 11,286 feet. Not an easy task from the western side, since rock just breaks apart in your hands as you grab onto it. I got as close as 40 meters from the peak when I had to go back. Without a harness, rope and climbing partner, it would have been too dangerous. As I was climbing down to warmer altitudes, I made the mistake of removing my gloves. On my way back, I slipped on the icy slope, falling and tumbling down for 20 or 30 meters. There is a video of it, and it might sound weird, but I want to share some stills that I saved from it, because I am genuinely stunned by the sharpness and rich details that my phone was able to capture. Truly impressive, given that it all happened so fast. Everything seemed to explode around me forming these shards of ice that you can see here. Anyway, as I was coming down out of control, I instinctively tried to use my hands to slow my descent. And that's when I sliced my left hand against something. Some hidden rock or ice, I'm not sure. Everything happened in an instant, and I didn't even feel any pain. In fact, once I stopped, I got up without even realizing what happened. It was only moments later that I noticed a small trail of red marks on the snow. I had severed an artery and I was losing blood fast. Without thinking too much, I applied an improvised tourniquet using a tissue, a glove and a piece of rope. After taking care of the most pressing matter, I reached for my phone to call for help and I discovered I had no signal. That actually worried me the most. So with no other choice, I grabbed my things, put my hand above heart level and started making my way down towards the closest mountain hut. I probably would have never made it. At 2700 meters, I found signal and despite having damaged the phone speaker, I was able to call for help and give emergency services my location. A whole 50 minutes after the accident, I was rescued by helicopter and taken to a hospital for immediate surgery. Tired, weak, bruised, my hair and clothes drenched in blood, I was discharged that night at around 2 a.m. Less than two days later, I was back on the mountains, taking it easy, of course, given that I had a good third of my blood missing from my body. And that's exactly something that I truly believe in. Life is not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. This time, quite literally. Accidents just happen, and you should never allow them to influence you, at least not in a negative way. This experience has taken a big toll on me, but I am back and I am back making videos, which as you know, I am not able to release on a regular basis and in large number. Partly because of time restrictions, unfortunately I don't do this full time, and partly because I have an almost maniac control over the making of my videos. I do almost everything myself from start to finish. But in order to speed up production times, I am making changes and learning to let go a little bit. Most importantly, I'm a firm believer of letting people do what they do best. In my case, I like to be creative, write scripts, often while having coffee, touch on topics that are dear to me, and build stuff, especially from recycled materials. What I am not is a fast and efficient video editor, for example, so I'm going to delegate part of that process to others. In fact, the next episode of TCMW will be edited by Anissa, who today also happens to be behind the camera. Say hi to everyone, Anissa. 
I'm also finalizing Food for Thought episode 3 and I'm about to enter the post-production phase of the first episode of yet another brand new series. Exciting times! So stay tuned for a bunch of new videos coming very soon. Thank you.